In no way is this book an argument against having conviction. And there's clearly situations in life where we should not stop and consider whether or not we might be wrong. I mean, if you are being chased by a tiger in the jungle, you should probably just make a split decision and go with it. That said, there are also many, many, many situations in life where the failure to stop and consider the possibility that you might be wrong are at least as catastrophic. And just to point to one fairly obvious example, uh, we are all still recovering from a global financial crisis that was the product of people refusing to entertain the possibility that they were wrong, even though other intelligent people brought the evidence to them and said, you need to look at this and you need to think about this. In most situations, the amount of time and resources that you're going to spend stopping to entertain the possibility, possibility that you might be wrong are so much less than the time and resources you're going to spend correcting that mistake after you made it. The most of the time, admitting that you're wrong, especially in an argument, sometimes has a lot to do with um, the way the other person is going to respond once you, you admit it. Uh, so, do you, from your own experience, how do you overcome that? The first thing I would say is that it highlights the fact that we all have a responsibility not just to admit our mistakes, but to be gracious when other people admit theirs. <laughs> Uh, and actually, I have a I have a rule about this that's very helpful. That Georgian phrase, I told you so. Um, my rule about this is that you should imagine that you get one I told you so per friend per lifetime. <laughs> this turns out to be very valuable. I mean, I'm kind of kidding. But it forces you to think really hard. Is it really worth it in this moment? to gloat about how right I am, even though I know it's going to make this person feel bad. Even though I know some part of me understands this is not a mature, grown-up, thoughtful way to handle this situation, and I would hate it if someone said it to me, I'm still going to do it. And that rule forces you to step back and think, I get one chance. Really, right now? <laughs> <laughs> Tito, <laughs> 
Magram, I think it's a good thing to do with the Helmet, the Shansi, the Misa, the Mutra, the Gitari, 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 the a couple of things happen. First of all, it's astonishing. Like we do that so rarely that the first thing that happens is people are just surprised. Da chemi ganustile bit tuki kadat kuetrom ukan da ichio da tuaro ai ki partali kartste bi inde na dishuya ta tuak etep. Amasro aru sarmo velita kautus kuau tseps rota swa adamene amasak eteps. The other thing that happens is that, that instant that you step back, very often the other person or other people will step back to. We are a species of mimics. We do what people around us are doing. If you step forward, they're gonna step forward and get involved in that conflict. If you step back, it's amazing how often the other person will say, well, you know, I don't know, you have a point, I see where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In Midihar, to Kishenute, is in Chete was a god model, Magram Rosash and Ukanihe, is in Sukanihe, and Chuanwart Saheba, Roman, it's Ekman, is Mimikria Saketeps, Tak Shirat Padzout, Ekman, 